What's up guys, Trevor here with e-commerce paradise. Today I'm going to talk about the differences and like the benefits, pros and cons between high ticket dropshipping and low cost dropshipping. If it's your first time listening to the podcast or watching a YouTube video, definitely get my free niches list at ecommerceparadise.com slash niches. It's a list of high ticket products that you can explore and research and possibly sell online to make a lot of money. Let's get into it. So what is low cost dropshipping? Low cost dropshipping just basically means selling cheaper products online, but it's the business model behind that that most people choose that makes the biggest difference. So uh, first of all, I'll start off by explaining the high ticket dropshipping business model and then I'll explain the differences and then kind of the reason why probably you want to choose high ticket, but there are some times where you'd want to choose low ticket as well. So high ticket, the way it works is that usually it's based in the country that you're present in that you are that your business is located in um, so whatever that happens to be usually it's the US and my audience I'm targeting the US because I'm my business is located in the US and so you know if your business is located in the US the best thing to do is to find suppliers that are in the US that ship to the US and maybe even the neighboring countries like Canada or uh, you know some of the US uh, you know other areas outside the lower 48, like Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, things like that. But mostly it's in the continental 48 USA. So um, high ticket drop shipping is US to US based shipping and the suppliers are all going to have US based warehouses. So you're not going to have to have anything shipped from overseas or shipped from another country. Um, there are some exceptions, like some suppliers that are located in Canada can ship to the US really quickly. Um, and they have a free trade agreement, so it doesn't cost a whole lot more money. Um, so that works. But Usually the suppliers are located in the U.S. and they ship to the U.S. And also the way it works is that you're going to have to contact these suppliers and actually get what's called an authorized dealer agreement. An authorized dealer agreement is like any agreement. It's going to have a list of, uh, you know, things that you're going to have to agree to in order to do business with them. And usually that includes a map pricing, um, some sort of an agreement based on um, the limited liability of the manufacturer and the things that you're going to have to take on as far as responsibilities. And, um, you know, it's basically a legal contract between you and the supplier as to what can or can't happen. And that, you know, basically that it can be terminated at any time, right? That kind of thing. So um, these authorized dealer agreements are pretty easy to get for the most part. All you have to do is find the supplier, you know, by looking at your competitors, which is what I talk about. Um, this is kind of the method for research, but that's for another video. And I do have other videos on that topic. You can research my channel to find the product research, uh, you know, niche research videos to see how that works. But basically the way it works with the suppliers is that you'll email or call them and ask them to set up a dealer account for drop shipping only and that you're an online only retailer. And then you have to have a website set up already. Um, obviously that you can't, well, I mean, you can do it. You can ask them without a website, but it's less less likely that they'll approve you without a website. So it's good to set up a website and you should not try to just set up a website like on eBay or Amazon or um, some kind of free website builder. You should use a professional website builder like Shopify. I recommend Shopify. And you should also set up a domain name like a .com domain name for your store, uh, some kind of a branded domain name with their niche keyword in it. And um, basically you just email them. They'll give you a legal contract to sign and fill out a price list, um, you can ask for an inventory sheet, you can ask for high quality images and videos, things like that. And um, when you get all that, that uh, information from them, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to list all their products on your website. And then you basically can use any of their images for marketing purposes and any of their videos for marketing purposes too. So you can repurpose all their stuff. You can uh, you know, basically just copy and paste it or you can you know, kind of customize it with your own logo and your own like, you know, added branding and stuff like that. And um, usually, you know, obviously they're not gonna care. They're gonna want you to do that because it's gonna help you sell stuff. And if they really understand the true nature of online business and online marketing, they'll really appreciate that you're helping to expand their brand to a wider audience. Because as a brand, usually they're gonna want to be in as many marketplaces as possible that it makes sense to be in. Um, some of these brands will not want you to sell on Amazon or eBay or House or Walmart or you know other marketplaces out there big marketplace, broad marketplace websites, some that allow like auctioning and some that just, you know, basically pit one seller against another. Um, but if you are a uh, niche site, then it's very likely that they'll approve you because that's the kind of site that they want to be on is a niche site in their niche. 
So that's the high ticket dropshipping business model. And the key difference is, is that you're going to be an authorized dealer of these brands. So there's not going to be any issue with trademark infringement. So I'll now get into the low cost because low cost, uh, you know, and there's, there are more differences than that, but low cost dropshipping, that's kind of the main thing. With low cost dropshipping, most people are doing is they're finding a supplier in China or another overseas location where the, the product costs a lot less than it does in the U.S., where there's very high margins. So with high ticket, since it's U.S. to U.S., the supplier has already imported the product to their warehouse and they have to fulfill it and there's a lot of overhead there so the margins are going to be quite a lot quite a bit less for you usually it's somewhere between 50 percent uh, before shipping to all the way down to like 20 percent before shipping and then um, after shipping costs usually it's like somewhere between 10 percent and like 20 or 30 percent that's just mostly what i found with high ticket drop shipping with low ticket drop shipping um, it can be all the way up to like you know a thousand percent margins. So, you know, you could find like, for instance, like a dollar product and resell it for like 30 bucks. That would be a 3000 percent margin. But um, the margins can be really, really good. And um, but what's going to happen is you're going to be taking a lot, a lot more risk and you're going to have to do a lot more marketing and the fulfillment cost is going to be a bit more as well. Now, the key with low cost is that usually you want to find products that are very, very small or cheap to ship. That's going to be the main thing. And it's kind of the same thing there with high ticket too. high ticket. You really want to find products that are less expensive to ship because ship Shipping costs can really eat your margins up like crazy. Uh, sometimes they eat up so much that you'll be negative profit on an order and you'll have to raise your prices uh, to cover shipping costs. Um, but with low cost drop shipping, it can be the same thing too. So um, I, you know, and with low cost, of course, the biggest thing is that you're not an authorized dealer of any particular brand. So you're going to be selling like generic products, basically, you're not like branded products. Um, and there are um, some caveats, like I'm sure there are some brands that actually do have like warehouses in China and will do an authorized dealer agreement and ship from China to the US. And, you know, maybe you could set it up that way. But the biggest thing here is the risk involved because you're selling a physical product. Um, returns cannot be uh, managed by that Chinese supplier. They will not be. They just won't accept them. So usually, like I would say almost 100%, 99% for sure will not accept returns. What they'll usually do is they'll give you, so if there's like obviously a damage that was a warranty issue, like the product doesn't work, you can uh, make a note of that, send it to them with proof, and then they'll give you a credit to use off towards future purchases. That's usually how it works with manufacturers in China. So, uh, But you're going to be responsible for accepting those returns back if you want to. So the cool thing about low-cost drop shipping is each order, the products cost a lot less. So if there is a big problem with that product, then obviously you could just tell the customer to keep it because uh, it's not a big deal. Um, and hopefully you're doing a lot of volume. Like if you're selling, like let's just say a $10 product, or let's just use that example of $30 because that's pretty common, I think, $30 to $50 product. Um, if you sell, you know, a thousand of those, a thirty to fifty dollar product, you're making thirty to fifty thousand dollars in revenue. That's great, um, and you have to do one or two, or maybe even like up to like ten percent returns. Um, that's not going to be a huge cut, and especially if you're keeping, you know, I would say hopefully sixty to eighty percent margins after shipping, maybe. A little bit less depending on you know how much the shipping costs are and all that stuff and duties and taxes uh, but hopefully it's a high margin so it's not going to each return is not going to eat away so much at your bottom line that you're going to have to try to accept it back and and process the return with the supplier as well so um, yeah that's kind of the main differences here is with low cost you have a bit more risk up front so you have to be more strategic in the products you choose suppliers you choose the product quality i would recommend if you do low cost is that you definitely get um, product sample sent to you first and, and check the products for quality before you start to sell them online. You can even then like take pictures of it, more professional pictures, not just use your supplier's pictures. With high ticket, um, usually the products are bigger and it's harder to find lower uh, sized products and lower weight products, but they do exist. Um, but they're going to be more expensive. So buying some sort of a example, uh, you know, product to take pictures of to test quality of is going to be quite difficult unless you have a lot of uh, credit line or <clears throat> you know, a lot of uh, cash up front to do it. Now, back in the day, um, like I sold bicycles, a lot of bicycles. And so the thing about bicycles is that I actually rode them and really enjoyed them. So what I did was I had a YouTube channel for my store and I actually bought the bicycles from the brand that I was selling. And what I would do is I would make assembly videos and I would make review videos and I would make videos of me riding the bikes around. And it actually really helped sell the products. Um, it was free organic traffic through YouTube. And um, I still get sales today because I actually do affiliate marketing. Um, for my old YouTube videos, I link to Amazon and I get commissions still for those same bicycles. So, um, but 
you know, that's what you have to consider is like, are you actually passionate about that niche you're going to be in if you're doing high ticket dropshipping? Because if you're going to buy that product, uh, it definitely needs to be something that you already know how it works, you know, like everything about it so that you can just go and make a video. If it's a niche where like you bought the product and you would have no idea how it worked and you have to read the whole manual and just like learn a bunch of stuff, um, you're going to have to climb a much bigger mountain uh, in order to be able to do that. So just be ready for that. So um, those are kind of the main differences. Uh, there's, you know, more stuff involved, but low cost. The main thing is that your suppliers are going to be in China. Um, high, high ticket is that your suppliers are in the U.S. Um, low cost, there's more risk. Uh, high, high ticket, there's also risk, you know, but your suppliers can take back returns. That's the main thing. And don't work with suppliers that can't take back returns. And if you do, um, just be ready to, like, somehow store this high ticket product at your house or at a fulfillment center somewhere um, and try to resell it on eBay if there happens to be someone who just, like, isn't happy with the quality of the product or something. Um, because at the end of the day, someone files a chargeback, um, the bank is going to tell them, okay, send it back to the uh, retailer. And then they're going to send it back to you whether you like it or not. And so you're going to need to provide an address for that. So uh, I only work with suppliers that accept returns. If they don't accept returns, I just don't work with them because it's just too high risk for me. I've dealt with it in the past with, you know, having to accept back returns and it's just not, it's just not fun. It's annoying. Unless it's a product that you like to use all the time and then you have like a scratch and dent style product that you could like resell or something like that. Um, but it's just, you know, there's risk on both ends of it, but at least with high ticket, you can have a supplier that will accept most returns back. Um, there's usually going to be a restocking fee and uh, the customer is going to be liable to pay for return shipping and also the original original shipping cost, if it was free shipping, that's usually how these policies work. So you've got to make that clear on your site. You've got to add all the policies to your site. So it's just additional work. Um, also with high ticket, usually you have like a bigger product catalog. You know, suppliers are going to have like a lot more products and you get to kind of like sell the same thing over and over again. Whereas with low cost drop shipping, usually the way it works is you pick like one product and you create like a one product store <clears throat> or, or a general store <clears throat> and you sell that one product and you find another winning product and you sell that product and another one, another one, one. And sometimes they do really well, sometimes they don't. And sometimes they do really well and then they kind of fade out and stop doing so well. So you have to find new winning products all the time. So there's like a constant research process there. Um, and it's kind of a similar thing with high ticket. Like sometimes with high ticket suppliers, um, you know, with certain niches there's seasonality so they're really popular during one season and they're not so popular during the next and sometimes there's things like um uh, fads where like, you know, a certain entire niche will be extremely popular for a few years running and then all of a sudden not so much and then it'll come back. And uh, so there's all sorts of things in both of these business models that you have to look up out for and stuff. But um, here's the thing with high ticket. The main difference is, is that um, you're working with brands it's like trademark brands and with low cost, you can't. So, I mean, you can, but like, usually you're going to be selling generic products from the supplier in China, meaning the supplier in China will probably will definitely will uh, private label their products. So if you wanted to, and you found a winning product, you could create your own brand and then have them add your brand label to that product. And a lot of people do that. And that's definitely the way you should go. Low cost dropshipping is a great way to start, get product data, do research, uh, find out what works, and then create a brand and sell it. Maybe even just create a whole new website for that brand and sell it and all that stuff. And that's usually what um, some of these top e-commerce players do in, in the game is because you're creating more brand equity. Um, you're kind of creating a moat around your business that way. You can get a trademark for your business. Um, even if it's like a, a special custom designed product, um, you can get you know all sorts of protection that way. Um, so, uh, you know, it's definitely the way to go. And with high ticket, it's also the same. If you're, if you're doing high ticket drop shipping, you find a brand or a product that does really, really well, you can hack, ask them if they'll be willing to help you private label that product, put your own brand on it and even like house it and fulfill it for you. Um, you know, the product itself doesn't have to have the logo on it. Maybe they'll just ship out a generic version of their product and slap your sticker, put your pamphlet in there, or, or it doesn't even matter. You know, they don't even have to do that. But if they did, that's even better. So, um, you know, there's different, different ways, but dropshipping usually, um, it's a great way to be location independent, but it's not like the end all. You should definitely look into private labeling and I'm going to make a separate video on that and why it's not necessarily better, but it's definitely a way to go beyond what you're already doing with dropshipping. Uh, and you can do dropshipping as a part of private labeling as well. So <clears throat> that's kind of like a stepping stone, let's just say. Uh, to creating a more valuable business. And then when an investor looks at a business, they're looking for, you know, valuable parts of the business. If you have private, excuse me, private label brands that you want to sell, that's going to make it way more valuable. And you're going to be able to have a higher multiple and a better exit if you do decide to sell someday. So uh, yeah, high cost versus low cost. It's hard to say. It's, it really depends on you and your financial situation. If you don't have much money to start with, low cost is probably the better way to go to begin with, to get some, uh, you know, uh, 
to get some experience and get some traction and just like choose a, a lower cost product. Um, find a supplier where the margins are high enough to make it worth, worthwhile, make it make sense for you. And then set up a website with Shopify, um, you know, set up your product listing, set up some you know, email marketing and set up your social media profiles. <clears throat> and then what I would do is just start running some Facebook ads to the target audience, which would be just the interest of that with either pictures or videos of the product. Hopefully your supplier can supply them. If not, you'll need to make them yourself somehow. Um, and then hopefully you get some traction that way. Um, you can also run Google ads for the generic keyword of the product and you might be able to get some traction that way. Um, and if you do end up finding a product, a winning product that is gets traction, then I would say definitely reach out to your supplier and talk about private labeling um, and also consider having your own fulfillment center in the US. So um, that means that you would order in bulk from your supplier, get a better price, they're all private labeled, you'd store it yourself and ship it out. Um, Amazon FBA is one of those examples, there's other fulfillment centers. If you're gonna do high ticket, you're gonna need more money up front and able to um, be able to afford the orders that come in because they're more expensive orders. So it's either you have high limit credit cards or you have a bunch of cash. So um, high ticket dropshipping can be done with a limited amount of funds, but just keep in mind, usually in the very beginning, um, holds are placed on merchant accounts. So when you first get your first order, it's like one, two, three thousand dollars, up to five or ten thousand dollars. They're going to be like, um, who is this person? And uh, we want to make sure that they're real. They're not just trying to scam somebody because it's a lot of money. Not five dollar order, ten dollar order is five thousand dollars. So they're going to ask for all your stuff. It takes up to a week sometimes. And in that time, you have to pay your supplier to ship that product to your customer and provide the merchant account with the invoice and all the tracking information, right? So you're going to need a credit card, a business credit card. And they're really easy to get. Um, you just need to set up an LLC and an EIN, and uh, or you can just be a sole prop and get an EIN, or just be a sole prop. Um, but usually EINs are required, and you need to set up a business checking account and get a business credit card, Chase or uh, Amex. Those are both great banks to get from. <clears throat> Those are the top banks that I use. And uh, yeah, you're just going to need, I would just highly recommend getting a business credit card. It gives you some kind of reward points or cash back. And then use that for your place in your orders and use that for ad spend. <clears throat> okay, guys, hope this video was helpful. Um, I can't really say which one is better than the other because they both have different uses. And um, you know, I do low cost drop shipping alongside high ticket drop shipping. Um, on my high ticket stores, I sell accessories and they're drop shipped from Walmart. Um, you know, I used to do Amazon, but they don't allow that anymore. So, and Walmart doesn't have any problem with it. So you can do low cost drop shipping alongside high ticket drop shipping. Don't make it your main thing. Um, I just do it for accessories, like anything under a hundred bucks that goes along with the products I already sell. It works great. So you can definitely do it alongside in that you know, format, or you can do like a post-purchase funnel or something like that to sell accessories. Um, that works great too. Usually high ticket suppliers will have low cost products to drop ship and accessories, you know? So, um, you know, get your feet wet and figure out which one you like more and eventually make your own brand. That's really the end game here. So uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely hit the subscribe button, like and comment below. Ask me any questions you have. I'm happy to respond and definitely reach out to me um, if you are interested in taking advantage of any of my services at ecommerceparadise.com. I have the turnkey service. I have ad management, SEO services. Um, I have virtual assistant recruiting services and lots of other stuff. And check out my high ticket dropshipping masterclass, which is a 35 module course. It's at ecommerceparadise.com slash masterclass. Thanks so much, guys. Take care and I'll see you out there.